Hi, I'm Pat Poreskin. I'm an art teacher in Bettendorf, Iowa at Mrs. B School of Art. My students and I were privileged enough to work with some incredible ladies and our story about them entitled Women of Courage begins here. About six months ago my students and I began the process of uh, deciding about doing some portraiture and inspired by one of the area leading portrait artists, Rose Franzen from Maquoket, Iowa, we were trying to decide what we should do. It happened that that week I was scheduled to do an art project with women as a second language classes at Church of Peace in Rock Island, Illinois. Um, there I met a great group of ladies that we do little art projects with occasionally. And while I was there, one of the group of women started to ask me, draw me, draw me. So I took out some charcoal and began to sketch the woman who didn't ask to be drawn. And when I finished the drawing, she said to me, why are you drawing me? I'm no one. And that really bothered me. And I said, I'm drawing you because I can't believe it's such a miracle that you're sitting across the table from me because of all that you've been through to bring me bring you here in front of me today and that God would allow me with my gift of art to be able to meet you face to face and share our gifts together. All the rest of the day I kept thinking about it and thinking about it and on my way home I decided you know if Rose Franzen, a great artist, can paint 150 people from the entire town of Makokata my advanced art students can certainly pick out 16 people and make a difference in their lives and hopefully the women will make a difference in the lives of these students and they did. The stories of these women are each like a chapter in a book. Each story is different and it contains heartbreak, loss, we don't even talk about the atrocities that they experienced. But a little bit about some of the stories might give you a view into the exchange that my students went through meeting these incredible women. My students agreed to do this project and we arranged to go to the Church of Peace armed with our sketch pads and happy hearts. We sat down and we met our women. We sketched them in person and photograph them so that we could begin to create this project. So I'd like to introduce you to a couple. This is Vicki, and Vicki and her husband, Asuma, were refugees in a camp in Burundi. And after fleeing the violence in the Congo, rebels came into the camp, shooting at everyone, and they ran. Vicki and her baby one way, Asuma the other. As Asuma looked back, he saw his aunt and another dead on the ground. The other was his sister. Both Vicky and Asuma survived, but Vicky had been shot in the foot. She had a number of surgeries to correct the wound, but the wound truly never healed. And yet to this day, there's a hole in her foot you can actually put your finger in. And it's pretty pretty sad. They escaped and made their way to Tanzania and after many years in a refugee camp they eventually came to the United States and they now live in Rock Island. This is Sha Ro. Sha Ro's parents died when she was about five years old. Her brother was two and they went to live with her aunt. She lived in her aunt's village until the army came and began shooting at all of the villagers. She was about 10 years old at the time. All the people ran away and after a few days they went back to the village. They had to run away from the army four or five more times. When they came they attacked the village. Sometime later they went to a refugee camp in Burma by the Thai border. She was about 15 years old then. They lived there for about three years. They heard that the Burmese army was coming to burn the refugee camp, so the UN 
and the UNHCR, the UN Refugee Agency, made an agreement with the Thai government to allow them to come to a Thai refugee camp. She was in that refugee camp for 11 years, and now she's been in Rock Island five. Each of these beautiful paintings were painted by a variety of my advanced art students, many of them high school age. Each one took the journey to create the painting very seriously. And they did it with such expressiveness that you can see the beauty in each of the women that are here today. The project continues with two more stories. Siza, done by Eli Kugler, was out with her husband and she had a small three-year-old son, an infant on her back, and she was pregnant with another child. They began running when they were fired upon by the rebel army. It was a surprise attack. They didn't expect it whatsoever. Siza turned around to see her husband dead on the ground. She fell and couldn't figure out why she couldn't walk. She got up and tried to walk again, trying to drag the young child in, that what she was holding on in her hand, only to realize that the child that she was dragging had been shot and fatally wounded. She fell one more time, and when she fell again, she felt blood. The child that she carried on her back had been murdered, and she had also sustained a wound to the abdomen, resulting in the death of the unborn child. She lost her entire family that day. She says how terrible and sad it is, and she wishes never to talk about it. She's aged a great deal. The story is just heartbreaking, the fact that you are murdered, your family is taken from you, all because of who you are. The final woman who made a tremendous impact on my students is Mary. Mary is featured in a very large portrait by Amy Whiteman. Um, Amy is a very amazing young artist who's now a freshman in college at Iowa State. Amy's advanced skills, in addition to her thoughtfulness, uh, was a treat, especially for her when Mary came to class to surprise to meet the girl that was doing her photo. We couldn't quite get them together the day that we went to sketch. And Mary came and talked to the entire class that day. She told her story. She was seven years old, and she and her father, her brother, who was five, and her other brother, who was two, were gathering firewood out in the desert and while they, in the Sudan, near the Sudan. And while they were gathering firewood, the rebel army came and attacked. The saddest part was her father was hit. She was hit with shrapnel. And then they came hand-to-hand -hand combat, and they butchered her father in front of her. They drug part of his body away. And here she is, seven years old, with two small children sitting holding her dying father. And in his heart bled out, his last words were, save your brothers. She said, God, I am only a small child. How can I do this thing? And then she took a deep breath. She made up her mind. She went and she found the rest of her father's body. She put him back together. She took off her sarong and covered him with it. She took sticks from the firewood and made crosses. She put a cross on the grave where they laid him, and then she made a cross for herself to take with. She dipped her thumb in her father's blood. She made the sign of the cross on each boy's forehead 
her own and her father's. They said goodbye and she set out to save her brothers. They walked for three months. She said to my students that night as we were working in clay while she talked to them, she said, I want to taste that dirt, that clay that you are working with. It looks very good. You know, dirt isn't terrible to eat. I ate mud. I ate mud from all over when we were in the Sudan for three months. They walked a thousand miles. It wasn't until the children were half dead, she really didn't know if the baby was alive. They were in the desert, collapsed. When she heard a noise rumbling, she said, God, is this how it ends? Is this how I should die? And with that water fell from heaven. The Red Cross had heard of these thousands of children crossing the desert alone. They released water from the helicopters, and when the water hit her brothers, they gasped for air, and they were revived. The Red Cross landed, provided them with food and some water, and escorted them to a refugee camp some miles away. Mary, her brothers, stayed in that refugee camp for 21 years. Mary is now here in Rock Island. A great blessing, she says. She's raising her family here. And she says to her high school age daughters, when they say they're hungry or they're bored, she just shakes her head because she really knows what those mean, the meaning of those words are. This story impacted all of my students, each one, every single artist, myself included. I'd like to name the artist because I think their work is amazing. This is Thompson Teasdale, Elizabeth Masterson, Sarah Dixon, Marilyn Buell, Madeline and Isabel Fox, Jessica Blint, Chalana Henning, Emma Keebler, Emily Hummel, Katie Whiteman. This is Madeline Fox's, Jessica Blint again, and Amy Van Fossen and again, Eli Kugler. This is also done by Paige Metzger. So all of the women represented here are women of courage. Their struggle to come from where they came, whatever country, and to reside here in the United States is amazing. Mary just got her American citizenship last month and she is studying to be a nurse. They've overcome such adversity. And when I hear their stories, I think to myself, how here we are in America, how lucky and privileged we are to have the kind of life that we have. Certainly some of the things that we go through are first world problems, aren't they? But thank you so much for taking the time to take a look at our video here on YouTube. If you have any questions, please email me at mrsbsart at gmail.com and I'd be happy to answer any questions for you. We hope this inspires you or your students or your church group or whoever to try to make the difference in somebody's lives. We kept a promise and hope that you make one and pay it forward.